Hey, what's up guys? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are currently up in the beautiful mountains of Arizona, my favorite place in the world. And I thought we would just do an EDC update. Now, there's been a lot of setbacks on this trip, but we are currently fishing by a creek outside of Payson, Arizona. And we've actually caught a couple of trout already, both me and Cuervo. So that's, that's good stuff. We're making the best of it. Now, right now it is getting pretty warm, so the trout action is slowing down, but uh, that provides an opportunity to go ahead and film. And once again, I wanna just break down what we're gonna be using, what gear we're testing, what we're switching up as the weather changes and warms up and all that stuff. So thank you for joining us. Let's get started. So as always, we start on person from the top down. So of course, you've seen this hat. I've been rocking it for almost two years. This is the Brixton Thorpe 2 hat. I get asked almost every day, where you know, where did I get that hat? What's it called? Once again, from the company Brixton, the model was Thorpe 2. Sadly, it is no longer made. It has been discontinued for about over a year now. And, uh, you know, it sucks because it's a really great hat. It's 100% cotton, so it's great for, it's a middle of the road hat. You know, it's not wool for the cold months. It's not straw for the warm months. It's just right in the middle. Uh, we're still in that time frame where in the daytime it's very hot and there's a lot of glare, especially out in the desert. So this helps, uh, you know, provide some relief from that. And at the same time at night, it does get pretty chilly, especially up here in the mountains. So this does help keep you warm as well. Other than that, I do have a Yuko match up here on the side. It's more of a decoration piece than anything. Kind of uh, my inspiration was Boba Fett's rangefinder, how he has it on one side. Uh, you know, so I added something like that, just mainly for, once again, aesthetic purposes, but it is useful. It is a match. If you know what a, a Yuko Stormproof match, you dunk it in water, dunk it in snow, you pull it out, it'll keep burning. So really good stuff for an emergency. And then moving on down, I have a cotton bandana. Now, of course, in this world of, you know, the pandemic and COVID and all that stuff, and anytime we enter a public place like a gas station or restaurant, you know, you got to cover your face in most places. So if this is convenient, just putting it around your neck like that, then bring it on down. And once again, it's a bandana. So I have many more uses for it than that, you know, in case I have to use it to wipe my face or, or you know, uh, address a wound or something like that. This is going to help me out. Then moving on to my chest pocket, as always, I have a notepad and a pen. This is a Sharpie pen and there's a notepad. So you guys know, you know, I like writing lists, uh, organizing my thoughts, uh, schedules, uh, stuff like that. I'll sketch an idea or, or whatever the case may be. And this is a new one. My last one was very old already. I was down to like five pages and I forgot it on my shirt pocket last time. And it, I washed it, put it in the laundry and uh, rest in peace notepad. So uh, I got a new one now and I always like writing my thoughts, ideas, all that stuff. And then moving down to my hand, of course, my Timex Weekender watch. I like the simplicity and you know, it's always good to tell the time, especially when, um, you know, it's just convenient and you don't have your phone on you, you're we're filming or something. And uh, yeah, I just really love this watch. Very simplistic, but very handsome. Moving on down to the waist area where all the cool stuff's gonna be. First things first, on my belt loop, I'm gonna have my keys. Now I don't have a lot of stuff on my keys other than the necessities, you know, how to, uh, my truck, key my my house keys um i do have a couple things added on here this is a talisman made by corvo negro uh we hunted a snake a couple years back and he made this for me it has a couple of the 22 shells i used to hunt that snake something of something of a good luck charm uh, parts of it are broken just from wear and tear um i have a can opener a little military can opener and then i have this tiny two flashlight from nightcore uh, sometimes it works, like right now it's working, sometimes it doesn't. I do have to send this in for repairs, because, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, sometimes you'll click it and it could be fully charged and it still won't power on. So, I've uh, been having a lot of problems with this thing, but, um, they did tell me to send it in and I haven't had a time, time to do it yet. But, uh, that's about it. Nothing too particularly fancy, a little Din Jaren. it was a gift from a family member. Uh, the Mandalorian, little Lego one. Okay, moving on down to the side pockets. And this is really cool. I like, I like how flush this is considering all the stuff I'm carrying. First things first, I'm rocking this new flashlight by a new company. They're called Rovivon. This model's called the Aurora A1. This thing is pretty good. It has 600 lumens, uh, several different modes, and look how small it is. I mean, this thing can be a keychain flashlight, but you know, it also comes with the clip. So I like how small it is. 
and I can rock it on me without it being too obtrusive. Other than that, over here in my coin pocket, I have the Exotac fire sleeve with with a big lighter in it. Of course, this thing is waterproof. Um, it'll float to the top of the, you know, if it falls in a stream or something. Um, so I have a, I'll always have a source of ignition there. Really like it. And of course, I have this little key ring on it. That way I can pull it out quickly. And then I have a multi-tool. So this is the Leatherman Blast. Sadly, they don't make this model anymore, but I think it's really great. I normally don't carry a multi-tool on person nowadays, but I am fishing. I knew I was going to be fishing, so I brought it with me. And uh, yeah, I had to remove some hooks from some trout earlier, so you can see a couple, a little bit of blood there I got to clean. Okay, and then from there I have a bunch of different uses. I have um, some scissors. I have Phillips screwdriver. I have a can opener. A file. Over here on the side I have a saw. A flathead screwdriver. And then a knife, a little backup knife there so that's what I was using to cut up some worm earlier today and I actually think I'm getting tugs from a trout uh, nice <laughs> whoa look at this beauty look at that look at them good size too really pretty Awesome, so we just finished catching a trout right while we were filming, so of course I just removed a hook from the trout, so it's a little slimy, uh, so let me just wipe that, and then I'll clean it better later on, but just wipe off the moisture from there, and uh, yeah, this Leatherman is really awesome. Once again, it's a shame that they, don't, they no longer make this model, but uh, really cool stuff. I like how flush this is, and of course I still have a pocket in case I need to put like pocket change or something, and then... Of course, right here, on another belt loop, I tied around my bandana. So, once again, this is a second bandana. So many uses for a bandana. And uh, right now, just wiping my hands from guts and worms and all that stuff, right? Stream water. So, just convenient to clean. I actually stole this look from my buddy, J.D. Grayman. And he stole this look from Slash from Guns N' Roses. So, it's a cool look. Just flows in the wind, and it's just handy to have there. So, you don't have to, you know reach into your pocket, unfold it, use it, and then fold it back and put it in your pocket, especially while we're, while we're fishing. So we're on the go a lot of times. So it's useful to just have it right there. So this is my segment on the side and I'm right-handed. So it's just convenient to, you know, get what I need. Normally from there, I would also have back here, my leather wallet made by my buddy, uh, James Howard. Unfortunately, I don't have it on me because it's in the truck. I'm fishing, so I didn't think I would need it, but I normally have the wallet there. So really beautiful leather wallet that my buddy made for me, and I love it. Woo! Damn. <sighs> Hell yeah. So moving on to my left side, uh, my pocket is, I keep it fairly simplistic. I only carry chapstick in here, so nothing terribly exciting, uh, just everyday stuff. I always carry a chapstick there. And then of course, everyone's favorite, the knife. I like carrying a fixed blade. I live in Texas. Uh, they don't give me any grief for that, and I'm in Arizona. No one's going to tell me anything. So the knife that I'm rocking for this adventure is the Wood Steel Knives Snake Eater this beauty right here. So for those of you who don't know, this knife is made by Woody Smith of Wood Steel Knives, and this is my design. You can see the, my logo right there, the fox with the knife in its mouth. It's called the Snake Eater. So you've seen me in the last couple of EDC updates. I carry my Snake Eater, but I'm carrying the green prototype. This is the finalized version, so there's a couple of changes. Uh, it's a little bit more of a focused blade, and it is a little bit snazzier looking in terms of look. It just has a more rustic look with the leopard wood handle scales white and gray micarta liners and then of course you see the fox logo and then the blade 
For those of you who don't know, this thing is designed particularly for skinning game, gutting fish, also for cooking. So it's going to be 3 32nds inch thin with a flat grind up here, but then I have a Scandi down here for notching to make uh, deadfall traps and stuff like that. So a multi-grind, uh, AEBL steel, stainless, and then down here I have a crushing pommel, and you can see it says 001. So this is the first official snake eater in existence. Uh, I think there's, you know, he's had several orders since then. I think we're at like uh, 24 at, at this point. So uh, thank you all. If you're interested in checking the checking out this knife or purchasing one, I'll have the links down below to Woody Smith's Instagram account, also his website, so you can order it or inquire about it. I love this blade, really beautiful. Basically, I just wanted to mix, you know, the rustic old world look and uh, abilities of an old Green River type butcher knife, but with the modern. Uh, uses of, of a modernized steel, also the multi-grind like the Mora Consible. So uh, that's what I'm using in this adventure. So moving on down to my boots. Yes, I have gotten this question hundreds of times these last couple months. Uh, Fox, what happened to your boots? You know, because I started using some like uh, slip-on Chelsea boots these, this last year. So my Justin boots are back. They're still rocking. They're still pretty good. Uh, I just got lazy throughout the whole COVID thing and quarantine. You know, I wouldn't leave home for days on end. So, you know, I was either just wearing socks or, you know, I got those leather boots that are just convenient. Uh, but the boots are back. So uh, leather boots, I have spurs. I haven't ridden a horse in years, but it just, I just like the aesthetic. It's cool. Uh, on this side, I have paracord. So this is something I've came up with a few years back because of the ears, the boot ears, I can just wrap up some paracord here. I need to tie that up. And I'll always have cordage at my disposal on my person. So you never know when you may have to make a ridge line for an emergency shelter or tie some stuff together. Whatever the case may be, I have cordage here available. I'm, I wouldn't know how much, to be honest, I, I don't know how much I have in here. Um, I would estimate about 30 feet or maybe like 25 feet. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm just, I just thought of that and I thought it was a good idea. And then moving on to this side, apologize if I seem distracted. I keep looking at our lines because we keep getting bites. Uh, over here, I have my boot knife. I recently switched it to the Exodus Adventure Craft Knife. I do have a review on this if you want to check it out. I love this little blade. This thing is just such a user. Um, at first, I didn't think I would like it. It seemed just a little wonky, a little skinny. But um, I mean, I've used this. I have a review on it, so be sure to check out the review. I'll have the annotation up above or in the link down below. Uh, this knife is great for starting fires. It start, it's great for making a light batoning. Don't go crazy, of course. It's a light blade, but you know, something to use to, you know, to cook. Uh, I did process several uh, a trout and several bluegill with it as well. So it's a great little blade. And this is one of the older ones. So they moved to, uh, to work with another company, White River Knives, and they're much prettier than this nowadays. But uh, yeah, I love it. Has a little Kydex sheath and it just clips on beautifully. Hear that pop. So my backup cutting tool. Okay, so that's about what I'm rocking on my person. I feel like I'm fairly well balanced. You know, I have a cutting tool, I have a multi-tool, a cordage, a source to make fire, um, you know, bandanas, a hat for protection from the elements. And then of course, one thing I always forget to talk about is I always carry a canteen. Anytime I leave home, you always want water, especially when we're out here hiking and all that stuff. And you're, you know, the sun gets really hot. So uh, this is my Self-Reliance Outfitters metal canteen. So, you know, it is metal. So if I had to boil water from the creek, I'll be fine. And whenever I'm not using it, it can go in my haversack. So this is the haversack that I'm using. Uh, this is the M44 Haversack by the Hidden Woodsman. You can see his little logo right there. And I love this thing. Now, he doesn't make it. It was a limited run. It was something like of an anniversary slash tribute to World War II. And, uh, you know, it, it just has this classic military, vintage military look and feel to it. And I think it's beautiful. I mean, look at these straps. Just really cool. Once again, he's not making them anymore. Uh, but if you're really interested, if you're, you know, if there's serious inquiries about him making some, perhaps I might be able to convince him to make a small limited batch. So let me know if you're interested. I love this bag. Other than that, I have a metal can, uh, a small cup here, a metal cup. Let me get it out of here. 
So a little cup, once again, it's a camping mug. It, it is made out of steel, so stainless steel, so I could boil water to make coffee, uh, tea, ramen, whatever the case may be, or I just wanna sip on some whiskey or something. So I like this one because it has a carabiner. You can put it on your haversack. I can even put this on a belt loop if I wanted to carry on my person, and it's pretty cool. So I dig it, you can tighten this lock up so it doesn't open. Really like this. Okay, now there is a pocket back here. I have my Exotac rip spool. So I have some duct tape on here and I have some sewing line. So in case I do need to make some repairs in the field, this works great. And then, um, of course, I don't know if you've seen this. We do have a review on this thing. Um, I've actually used this to capture some crayfish before. So you can, this is a good little thread line. Uh, wrap up, you know, some bait, like uh, some bacon, you know, uh, liver or something like that you know fish guts and put it on the creek and you'll you'll be able to pull out a couple of crawdads so uh it doubles for that once again check out a review if you haven't other than that i think i only have some AAA batteries yep these are backups for my uh light i'll show later my little lantern so uh that one's usb rechargeable plus you can use batteries so good little plan b so let's go ahead and open the bag all right, so the contents of my bag, I always have some form of battery bank for my phone. Keep in mind, my, your phone is your main source of communication. It also happens to be the camera for, for our filming. So you always want this to have full power. This is the Nightcore Power Brick NB10000. I have a review on this. I love this thing. It works great. It lasts a long time and it doesn't take a long time to charge back up. Other than that, a Shimog. Once again, another form of like a cotton bandana, you know, I could use it to, uh, you know, wipe my hands or whatever, hygiene. I could also use this like as a little pillow or to wrap around my face in case, you know, I want to stay warm or something. So 100 uses for a Shimog. It's basically just a big giant cotton bandana. The charger for my um, battery bank. Baco folding saw. Mini pocket spice kit. So as you saw, we did capture some trout. So, you know, whenever we're cooking them up, we're gonna, you know, put some salt, pepper, some cayenne on there. Uh, you know, so it's always good to have stuff like this when you're eating wild foods. It just helps raises morale. It tastes a little bit better. So I always have a little uh, And I got that from Townsend's by the way in case you watch the Townsend's YouTube channel They have a store as well. If you don't know who Townsend's is, I would suggest you check them out. They're really cool And then this is my Yuko I don't think you can tell but this is my uh, Little lantern. So when I'm camping, you know, I'm going fairly light. This is what I have magnetic you can pull this off so i can put this in my tent or you know my little shelter my primitive shelter whatever the case may be and like i said earlier this can be charged usb or you can use batteries as well that's why i have those triple a batteries so a little illumination source in the nighttime Some fat wood sticks here in case you know in case for whatever reason we're having trouble starting the fire I have some fat wood and then I have once again another item by the hidden woodsman he's currently I don't think he's carrying it but it, this is by Dexter cutlery and it's a little fork made in America and I use this a lot you know if I'm eating out in the field really cool right there a little utensil the one tigress poncho slash tarp so in case it's raining i can rock this you know uh, help keep me dry help keep my you know my haversack dry if i have it underneath me um it was also once again doubles as an emergency poncho i'm sorry an emergency tarp if i needed to so for what say you know worst case scenario one in a million that you know i got lost and i needed to just hunker down for the night i do have a poncho and of course i have cordage around my boot so i can you know set a little shelter to protect me from the elements i have a little of course ways to disinfect water i have um you know the shimog as to double as a little blanket so i think in a very bare bones rough emergency i think i'll be okay a secondary cup that nestles my um 
my canteen here. Okay, so the main compartment has been emptied. There is a secondary one back here, so let's show what I got here. I have another knife. This is my backup haversack knife. It may be my boot knife pretty soon for my new pair of boots. So this is a mini snake eater. You saw the one on my belt. This is uh, my design made by Woody Smith, and Woody Smith thought to make a secondary smaller one that's a little bit more agreeable for everyday carry, stuff like that, or, you know, once again, like an emergency uh, backup blade, companion blade to have in your haversack or your backpack. Uh, and it's really nice. I mean, I love the way this thing came out. Once again, AEBL, multi-grind, um, 3.30 seconds. And this may be thinner, actually. But yeah, really cool stuff. Once again, I may be rocking it on my boot pretty soon, so let me know. I'm thinking of just calling it the Snake Eater Boot Knife. You know, that way people will know that it's a smaller version. With the little leather sheath. Over here I have a one of those fishing hobo kits, you know, so just a little hand reel basically. I could just toss into the creek and see if I can pull out a bluegill or anything like that, a small trout. You know, the compartment's in here, so I have like a split shot, I have small hooks, stuff like that. So this was a gift from my buddy Dave from England. He sent it to me and I haven't really used it, so I'm going to be using it during this fishing trip. You never know, I might be able to pull out, you know, some game. And once again, going by with the theories, you know, say that scenario where I did get lost or whatever the case may be, I may even be able to procure some food. I did see some crawdads in this creek earlier, so yeah. And then just a couple of backups here. The Exotac Titan Light lighter. So another source of ignition. The Thrunite TH10 V2 flashlight and this can double you know there's a headband that you can place so this can become a headlight uh, a headlamp i forgot to bring the strap in one of my other packs so that's no good to me now but it is a pretty strong light i have a review on it i love this thing and lastly a ferro rod and this ferro rod was made by ernie from paleo hiker md youtube channel so be sure to check him out. He's a really cool guy. Uh, I've known him for several years, love to watch his videos. And once again, a ferro rod for those times where a lighter fails you, I can strike a fire, so. Okay, folks, so that's about the end for my springtime EDC update. As you can tell, as the weather warms, I'm leaving behind my wool gloves, uh, hand warmers, stuff like that. And I feel like I'm better balanced for going out here during, you know, hikes and fishing trips and stuff during the warm months. And uh, that's about it for us, guys. As the, the day progresses, there's more people showing up and you may hear cars and kids screaming and stuff like that. So we may be heading out of here pretty soon. Uh, going back to what I'm saying is I feel like I'm fairly well balanced, whether I'm out for a camping trip or a hike, whatever the case may be. I have cutting tools, uh, sources to make fire, a multi-tool a hat you know micro shelter my haversack like i showed earlier i have a tarp um cordage to set up a small shelter uh illumination all this stuff so i feel like i'm fairly well off i know what you're thinking i know somebody's gonna ask james do you carry and you know i'm not gonna say it because big brother's listening but um i don't in person as of right now i do carry a ruger it's in my backpack in the truck anytime i leave home it's in there but um I am saving up for something. So next time you see an EDC video, you'll be seeing it. But uh, yeah, as of right now in person, no. But in my truck, I do have one. At least sometimes I'll even carry a rifle, like if I'm going to be out extended for several days. Uh, and that's about it, guys. So uh, I think we're about done fishing. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, anything like that. And we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. Thank you.